So please put your hands together for Chris. I'll stand up for this first part. All right. So uh, my name is Chris Schmitz. Um, I am a developer over at Paradasky Creative. It's an advertising agency over in uh, Brentwood. Um, I do uh, I do full stack development um, at the moment. I'm building websites uh, and uh, uh, interactive web interfaces. Um, but before that, I was an application developer. Um, so uh, a lot of what we're going to see tonight is kind of my exploration of a. Uh, um, some uh, application development tools, um, getting into Electron. And actually, let me sit down and we'll dive right into it. Um, let's see. So we did the, Keith took my question about who, like uh, your experience level with Node. Um, who's used Electron before? Who's built anything with Electron before? Okay. So uh, have any of you like read about Electron, like read through the docs or anything like that? So. Okay, so the this talk is not really a this this talk isn't an intro necessarily. Like I, I'm not going to walk you through um, the uh, minute details of getting up and running with Electron. Um, what we're going to be doing is looking at uh, my initial exploration of uh, Electron. Um, so I built out an app. It's called App Launcher. Uh, we'll take a look at it in a little bit. Um, and I use that as a way to explore um, Electron and start understanding the, the API and start structuring the code and stuff like that. Um, so, the, so while this isn't going to be an intro, um, hopefully you'll be able to get some uh, takeaways as far as getting started working. Um, and maybe uh, we'll make some of the concepts a little bit more clear. So, da, 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 uh, and actually right before we get into the next slide, um, I am also a co-organizer and presenter for a couple of other, other meetup groups in, uh, in town, uh, the Full Stack Web Development Group uh, and Build STL. Uh, the Full Stack one is kind of self-explanatory. We talk about uh, web development uh, uh, up and down the stack. Um, and Build STL is an electronics building and programming meetup. So if either of those are interesting to you, you should come to the meetups. Um, and if you have questions about those, you can ask me. There, there's a couple of other people here that, uh, that help run those uh, meetup groups, so you can ask about those as well. So let's dive in. So uh, 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 over here. Okay. So Electron, <coughs> Electron uh, for all of you that are completely unfamiliar, um, is an open source tool that allows you to build uh, desktop applications uh, that are cross-platform, so you can build for uh, Mac, Windows, and Linux, um, and you can build them using web technology. So all the stuff that you would normally do to build your um, uh, web interfaces like your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can do in Electron, um, and then you can deploy that as an application. Uh, the, it's very, um, one of the reasons why Electron is so popular right now is that before um, to, to build desktop applications, you either needed to know a bunch of different languages or have a, have a, a team that can develop in uh, each of the platforms, or you had to use something like, uh, like Java that can be built for multiple platforms or some kind of a proprietary tool um, to build the application. Um, with Electron, um, I mean, with Electron, you still need to know web technology, but that tends to be a little bit easier to get into. Um, and uh, uh, and you know, it's easier to learn. A lot of people already have those skills from building websites, and if you could build, if you could build a website, you can get into Electron. It's super, it's super easy. Um, so this explanation is ripped directly from uh, Electron's documentation. Um, I'm just making sure I don't skip anything in my speaker notes. Um, the documentation is fantastic. One of the reasons why I didn't want to do an intro to Electron is because you should just read through the docs. And I know a lot of people say that about a lot of programming languages, and it's like, that's great, the docs suck. But um, Electron actually has really good documentation, um, uh, which is part of what makes it so easy to jump into. So, uh, uh, so this is actually a... 
Uh, and that's getting cut off a little bit, so it's hard to see the star. Um, this is actually a screenshot from a website that Keith sent me yesterday um, that was the, uh, the rising stars of, um, of the JavaScript world for 2016. So it was basically a, an article that looked at all of the, um, all the projects on GitHub that gained stars over the course of the year. Um, and uh, the, the uh, output put a couple of my absolute favorite tools up at the top. Vue.js, I'm a huge Vue fan, so it was great to see that that was, uh, um, that was at the top of the list. You can't see it, but it's uh, 26.4 uh, thousand stars. Um, over the course of 2016. Um, and then Electron is number three. So hopefully that, that shows the popularity of these, uh, these tools. Um, BS Code's also down there and I'm a brand new fan. I have a couple of my coworkers are here and if you ask them how I feel about BS Code, I'm pretty sure they will tell you, please don't ask me because he won't shut up about it. Um, so it was cool to see all those, tool, uh, all those tools up there and of course to see Node up in the top 10. So just wanted to show that. Okay, so uh, the, present, uh, the context for this presentation, um, the app that I built, uh, like I said, it's an exploratory app, is really just me sitting down and trying to build something uh, real and usable. Um, I'm very much of the mindset of if you really want to learn a tool, you should build something that has some real world constraints to it. Because anyone can build an address book that doesn't page and only needs to store like 10 names and stuff like that. But once you actually have to build an address book, you start running into constraints that change the way you code. and um, force, forces you to explore the documentation and the tool uh, a bit more. So um, usually when I'm diving into something new, I'll read a little bit through the docs, kind of get a general feel, and then try and build something new that I, or build something that I can use. Um, <clears throat> so this is my first Electron app. So I'm still pretty new to it too. Um, I'm also fairly new to Node. Uh, I, started, uh, I started really diving into Node over the, well, in maybe late 2015, early 2016. So there's a there's a lot that I'm still learning as well, which will hopefully help as far as uh, as far as uh, walking people who are new through. Um, let's see, and uh, this will this is all going to be from the Mac OS and Linux perspective. Uh, we're, we'll look at the we're going to look at a, a shell, a Bash shell. Um, and uh, and the commands that the that the Electron app does under the hood, the actual thing that it does is uh, is shell commands. Um, but hope, like really, when it comes down to it, you're writing JavaScript, so it will work the same in Windows. I'm just not gonna be showing any Windows stuff. Uh, so and and also uh, the last point about that, um, because this is an exploratory app, there's some janky code in there. So it's not, don't take this as a perfect way. Don't take this as a way to structure, like definitely structure your app um, because I'm probably like not going to structure the, my next one the exact same way. So be warned. Okay, so the points that we're gonna hit, general structure of the app, um, debugging uh, an Electron app, uh, uh, building a UI for an Electron app, um, uh, for this particular app, uh, it is a is one that is meant to have a UI show so that you can configure it and then uh, go away so that it can just live on the menu bar. So um, the a little bit of a backflip that I did to make sure that that happened. Um, communication between processes, which I'll explain. Um, some menu caveats, uh, and then data storage for the application itself, and finally packaging it out. So hope, hopefully, like a. Um, an overview from uh, from uh, front to back. All right, so all that said, let's take a look at what we're working with. Uh, uh, uh. So this is the app. Uh, that title is supposed to be different. Um, <clears throat> but the so this is called App Launcher, and really it's just a group launcher. What the application allows you to do is to define a group of applications or really a group of things that you want to launch at once um, and then it allows you to launch them. So I have all the tools I use for development or the tools I use specifically for work um, or different types of development or testing or something like that. So rather than having rather than having all these apps launch on like whenever I start up my computer which doesn't happen super often or, uh, or as opposed to launching them one at a time, you could define a group of applications and then hit the button and launch them all. Um, 
the uh, the app goes through uh, through a, a CRUD process, so um, you can create a new group. Uh, mm -mm. Uh, you give it a name. Uh, you can grab. Let's see. So I might have to. Yeah, the uh, the click action. I, I did a bit of a code modification before uh, before the the meeting. So the drop down is not working. Uh, it's usually a bad idea to do that right before you present. But basically, you can you can come through and either click to get a drop down menu or um, drag and drop to add apps to that particular group um, and then save it. So now we have a new group that has these two apps. If I hit launch here, it'll launch the apps. Uh, let me quit out. Um, it has a menu bar icon, which is really, really, you come through here, you set up your groups, you say, don't show this to me whenever you launch, and then from here you could say, hey, launch these apps from the group. Uh, and then just to, to give a full context of what we're going to look at, um, we also have that same launch menu off of the dock icon. So you can either launch it from the menu, you can launch it from, uh, from the, uh, the dock icon. And let's pop it back up. So, and you can go through the, the other parts of the CRUD. You can come through and modify an existing one. There we go, we got that drop down. So we can add multiple at a time. Uh, and then uh, we have the delete part of the CRUD. Delete that group. That should be gone. It's an exploratory app. So the uh, so the that's the basic use of the app. Oh, uh, and then and really it's just a simple OS menu to quit out the app. So. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the general structure. So, let's collapse everything. Yep. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, the front doors are going to be locked after a certain time. Okay. Cool, thanks. Oh, yep. I feel like I'm playing a piano. Okay, so uh, general structure of the application. So um, <clears throat> the Electron app has uh, really two main parts. Uh, every Electron app has two main parts. Uh, the main process and then the renderer process. Um, the main process uh, uh, handles your window creation. Um, it handles communication between windows. Uh, so whenever your app pops up, um, if you have a multi-window app, it uh, allows them to talk to each other. Um, it also uh, allows for um, event communication between your uh, windows and anything that you may want to uh, uh, fire off from the main process. Uh, and uh, the and the renderer will render out your UI, give the uh, and allow you to uh, your users to actually use the app. Um, I have an extra layer down here on st uh, for storage. Um, this app specifically uh, saves its data to application support. If you're familiar with Mac OS, it's a um, a folder on your uh, OS that you can put your application data in. Um, and that way, if you delete the app or if you do an update of the app, your, uh, your data is intact, theoretically. Um, so those are the, the main parts. Where that uh, comes into play with the Electron app, and that's not gonna, uh, let's wait for that menu to go away. So the way that I have it structured, up there, the folder that you see that is uh, client, 
That's where all the renderer, uh, uh, the renderer files live. Um, there's, uh, that's where the, um, if you're familiar with uh, doing front-end JavaScript where you're compiling uh, or transpiling your JavaScript code, um, that is the bundled version of the UI client. Um, the source file is the unbundled version. So it's the, um, the front-end uh, client broken out into separate files for each of the components, which we'll dive into later. Um, the main uh, JS is the, uh, the main process file, so where all the window uh, management and communication happen. Um, and in this particular tool, this actually started off as a command line tool. So whenever I'm in the command line, just say launch group blah. Um, so I built it out as a Node.js command line tool um, using Commander, and then I was like, hey, let's uh, explore Electron and put a UI on the front. So that's why there's a separate library with, uh, with the storage management and the group uh, group launcher, but really, you can call, you can, uh, one of the advantages of using Electron is that um, all of those tools that I'm using um, uh, to do the launching and the storage and stuff like that, you could actually write into the renderer process if you wanted to. In the renderer, you have access to uh, your node tools, uh, so you could potentially do all the stuff that I have separated out here in the renderer, um, so, but that's why they're broken out. And actually, one of the things I wanted to do um, was to show uh, a more simplified version of an Electron app uh, to help give some context. So this is, <coughs> this is uh, um, the ripped from the Electron documentation for setting up the main process. Um, and uh, so we have the main process here um, and then we have an index file that's going to be served out, and the scripts running in here is actually the renderer process. So to walk you from top to bottom, which will hopefully uh, help uh, give context to what we're seeing in the big a bigger app, um, we pull in Electron, um, we create an app instance, and then uh, we also create a browser window. So the browser window is literally, I mean, it's what it says, it is like a browser window. Electron's renderer process um, essentially shows you a stripped down version of a Chrome browser, and that's what you're programming for. Um, so we're creating a browser window. Um, we're setting up some logic about how windows should be created, the, uh, the size of the window, um, the file that we're handing off to for the renderer process. Um, and, then, and then the rest of it is what to do whenever it closes, um, what to do when the application is, is ready, which is create that window, um, what to do when it closes. Uh, and so the, to dive in here, um, usually uh, on, the, on Mac OS, usually the, if you have a, an application window open, your app is open. If you close that window, the app doesn't necessarily quit. It just, uh, your, your window is just no longer active. Um, on Windows, uh, once you close that window, your whole app quits. So this is the way the Electron says, hey, if, you're, um, if all the windows are closed and you're on Darwin, Mac OS, or, or if you're not on Darwin, uh, then quit the app. So that's, the, that's all that is. Um, and then this is the part that accounts for uh, Mac OS, where if your app is, uh, um, if your app is open, and you don't have a main window, your browser window isn't showing, just create a new one. And that's it for the main process. You take all these comments out and it's a really tight little file, like the minimum amount that you need to get, uh, to get a browser window on the screen. So, and then from, uh, from there, so the main process runs and then it hands off to this index.html file and then this should look familiar to everyone because this is just a, an HTML file. So, We've got a regular HTML structure. Um, I'm pulling in Vue.js from a CDN, and then I'm firing off my uh, my JavaScript. If you if you looked at this, uh, if you looked at this from uh, like from outside of this app, the the index file, the minimum uh, amount that it takes to get this up and running, doesn't look anything different than the stuff that you would be building if you were just building a, we a regular website, which is kind of nice. So what I'm trying to do is say. You, you can do it. Like you can, if you're already used to building web stuff, you can do Electron. It's not, it's nothing crazy. Um, so just to show what this does. So this is all it does. Renders out our browser window. 
um, pulls in uh, or uh, uh, renders out our, our markup. And actually, I haven't tried this in a while, so it's broken, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, is our application. Um, it doesn't have the regular browser window stuff on top, but it does have the regular browser development tools. So you can start diving in and debugging from here. Um, and then uh, if, uh, you can debug the back end from something like VS Code or Node Inspector or something like that. So, uh, bup, 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 bup. so with that stated, to show the same thing in this app, it gets a little bit more complex. I'm pulling in um, a lot more tools to do things like to create the menu, um, to handle communication between the browser window and the main process, but it's still, it's still at, the, at its core the same thing. Um, so I pull in my dependencies up at the top. Um, I uh, create my window. Um, I have some of the settings abstracted out to a configuration file, which is really just just a JSON document to have a central place to update some stuff. Um, I create my app window and I hand off to my file that's gonna run the renderer process. Um, there's, some other, uh, there's some other things I have in here uh, that we'll, we'll jump into later. There's menu creation um, and then uh, there's a number of things that have to happen when it's, uh, when it's open, but and there's uh, channels for communication, but that's still it. There's like even even uh, with a larger file, it's still not that much to to do the main process. So, and then the index file that we hand off to is over in our client, and uh, and I'm uh, I'm building since I'm building with Vue.js, I'm um, uh, and like I said, there's the source file that has the untranspile client code. Um, so in the end, after uh, running that through a JavaScript build tool, um, it just lands in this build.js and that's what gets served out to the application. Um, uh, and, and that's working for here and pulling in, uh, pulling in uh, Webpack to do the build tools is something that's helpful, but as you saw in the other one, it's not completely necessary. You don't have to do a, a gigantic uh, JavaScript build tool set up to get into Electron. Let's see, uh, mm, 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 mm. so uh, so the first thing that we're gonna hit, oh, the first thing that we're gonna hit uh, as far as the topics that we really want to dive into is debugging. Um, I want to debug uh, right off the bat because we can use that to take a look at the app. Um, I uh, I'm using VS Code to debug uh, this Electron app um, because the because VS Code's Debugger for Node is absolutely fantastic. Um, it works. It works much like you would expect uh, the browser, the like the Chrome developer, or Firefox developer tools to work, um, where you can uh, only you can uh, uh, mark your uh, your breakpoints in your code. So let me just set a couple of breakpoints so that we can actually that'll be that'll be good enough to to show it. So. So with VS Code, um, you have uh, you have configurations for uh, the way that you want to debug your code. You can either launch the process directly, or you can just have your Node process running in the background, and VS Code can attach to something that's already running. Um, the there's a minimal configuration to the, that's really just telling VS Code this is where everything lives. Um, like this is where that main uh, the main process lives. This is the you want to run this with Electron. Um, but then, uh, and, and then, you know, I want you to, to either stop or not stop whenever, whenever uh, you actually hit the code. Um, but that's really it, and everything, everything else is handled by VS Code in the background. Um, the really nice thing about it that I'm not going to blow away now, but I mean, let me give it a, a try over here, um, is the. Uh, mm, mm, mm is that VS Code does that configuration mostly for you. So you could say Node.js and it will scaffold out a bunch of it. You, you can go through and update it from here, um, but also with the updating, you can, um, uh, you can get the type ahead to uh, not only figure out the correct settings, but to also get some of the available values and stuff like that. 
Um, and and I, I'm driving, I'm, I want to drive this home a lot because I tried using Node, uh, Node Inspector and it worked for the most part, but it was, a, it was a pain in the butt and it was very buggy and switching over to this uh, uh, was very easy. Um, and I also built this entire app before using VS Code. So after going through and preparing for this presentation and stepping through the debugger with VS Code, uh, I was very frustrated that I didn't do it in the first place. So uh, let's start our debugger. Let's see, let's hop. And, uh, and we're stops right here. So the same thing that you would expect in Google Chrome, um, you could set a breakpoint and have it stop. You can hover over uh, let's see, you can hover over variables to get information about them. Uh, you have access to those variables on the side so that you can kind of see the state of your application as you're stepping through it. Uh, you can see the call stack in its current state. Um, you can step back through the call stack and it navigates you to the files. And the thing is, it's not navigating you to a view of, uh, or a representation of the files. It's navigating you to the the literal, uh, let's see, hold on, let's, let me jump back to my code so I'm not goofing something up under the hood. Yeah. I just, uh, is this, um, are you running Mac here or is this on Mac? Uh, this is on a Mac. Okay, yeah, no, I saw the Mac file. I wasn't sure if you were running it. Okay. Oh, no, yeah, VS Code. Actually, nice. Yeah, VS, VS Code's super nice. I don't really like Microsoft all that much, but I love this application. Um, and and it's and if you are if if you're familiar with Atom, VS Code is built on VS Code is built on Electron. Um, so it's it's really just a, uh, a souped up version of what Atom. Uh, it's it's kind of what Atom is hoping to be. It's a it's an it's a nice uh, it's a nice development tool. So, uh, but, but yeah, so you're actually in your code. You could potentially modify this code and then continue stepping through. Um, let's see, so uh, you have your regular step tools so that you can come through and uh, walk through your code. Um, you can set breakpoints, uh, let's see, the, the breakpoints aren't gonna set while I'm actually running through it, but if I set one and then restart the process, uh, let's see, so, uh, if I restart the process, it'll recognize that new breakpoint. Um, a couple of other nice things, not to, not to do a, a whole VS Code sales pitch, but uh, um, one of the really nice things is that you can set conditional breakpoints. So only, hit the, uh, only stop the debugger when this variable equals this thing. Um, like whenever this is true, whenever this is full. Um, you can also say uh, only hit it, uh, only stop the debugger whenever you've hit hit this many uh, uh, hit this variables hit this many times. So if you've ever tried to debug recursive processes or um, or re really just looping processes and stuff like that, you could say, okay, I know that like based on the output, I know that it it fails like 50 iterations through the loop. So just stop it whenever it's hit 49, and then and then I'll look from there. So. Um, and then something that is, uh, as far as I know, is kind of broken on, uh, on Mac OS, and there's a there's an issue out for VS Code uh, on, on the open source repository, uh, is that you can set a function breakpoint. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work, but theoretically, whenever uh, whenever that function gets called, and I've got a bunch of other breakpoints for later in the demo. Um, whenever, whenever that function gets called, it will also stop. So if you know that, um, if you're seeing error output and uh, you're dealing with a third party tool and it's saying, hey, I'm, I'm breaking uh, on this particular function, rather than digging through the code, uh, digging through third party code to find it, you could say, here's the function name, stop whenever you hit it so that I could take a look at what's going on. So. Um, so from here, you can uh, you can debug your back uh, backend code. So this is jumping through the main process. This is jump is also jumping through uh, the storage interface, which is uh, like if you're if you're thinking um, uh, web development, this is doing backend code. This is this is what would be happening on your server essentially. Um, and then when it uh, when it finally hands off to your application. Let's see. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, the I broke the UI right before right before coming out here. Once you once you get handed off to let's see, let me do this. Demos break whenever I'm in front of a crowd. 26. Actually, I believe that is. Okay, and that is, that is the error that I ran into before coming out. I thought I had. So let me do this. So I'm, I'm going to blow this away really quick, and uh, if, it, if it fixes the issue, then that's great. If not, we'll just, uh, we'll just move on. Make sure that's out. Okay, we will just have to move on from there, but we can take a look at, ah, no, we cannot take a look at that. So, the, uh, you have, um, you have VS Code that you could use to debug your backend code. Um, like we saw whenever we were looking at that uh, simple demo app, you have access to your Chrome developer tools. Um, the thing that I really, really, really wanted to show is that uh, um, if you've, you, well, if, has anyone here built anything in Vue.js at all? Yeah, it's, it's fairly new. Uh, has anybody built anything in Ember? So, uh, so those particular JavaScript frameworks uh, have custom uh, dev tools uh, for Chrome. So if you open up your Chrome dev tools and you uh, install those ex ex extensions, you have a, uh, a special view into your front end code. Um, you can actually uh, look, through the, uh, look through the code um, the way that uh, Vue intends you to look at or the way that Ember intends you to look at, you can get information on the bits and pieces more than just looking through the DOM tree or looking, uh, like using the console to, uh, to uh, explore some of the information. Uh, if, you, if you'll bear with me, just one more, yeah. one more thing I want to try. Come on, work. Okay, cool. So this is this is a Vue.js uh, app that I built for um, for a different meetup group for the full stack group for a presentation that we did last week. Um, and it's a it's a regular browser app, so it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with uh, um, with Electron at the moment. But 
I wanted to try to show the um, the kind of thing that you could see in the dev tools. So so the, so Vue.js apps, and we'll get I'll get into this in more detail a little bit later. But um, Vue allows you to build a uh, an interface uh, using components. So rather than having like an MVC framework on the front end, or rather than writing a bunch of uh, spaghetti jQuery code, you can write these distinct components that are isolated unto themselves, and then uh, compose them together to create an interface. So what you can see here is the uh, the components that are uh, make up this particular interface I don't have the server running that this goes with but um, you can inspect each of the uh, individual pieces you can see the state of that uh, of that piece um, over in the side you can uh, uh, you have access to you have access to that component from the command line so that you can either fire things manually or you can uh, dig down and inspect things further. Um, but the whole point of that is um, to, when you're building uh, interfaces using, uh, using advanced JavaScript tools, there are additional tools outside of just what you get with your br uh, browser's dev tools that you can install and have access to in Electron. It'd be super cool if I could show you, but it looks like I can't, sorry. Um, let's see. Um, but, 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 okay, so we looked at the step debugger. Um, uh, we kind of saw the browser's uh, uh, development tools. There is a tool called Electron Reno uh, Reload. Um, if you've, uh, are any of you familiar with Nodemon, uh, which is, uh, so Nodemon is a service. When, when you're running your node code, you'll say node and then point to your JavaScript fire and node runs it uh, and then stops. Uh, if you make changes to your code, it doesn't necessarily run those changes again. Nodemon is an application that will listen for those changes and then rerun your code. So the, your development uh, loop uh, of uh, write some code, run the code, see what happened, uh, determine what you need to change, write some code, continue the loop, that becomes a lesson because you're not worrying about like uh, switching over to the terminal and say run again, run again. Um, Electron Reload does the same thing for Electron. So uh, you can write in your main process or you can write in your renderer process and Electron Reload will just restart that particular service. So um, it's a very helpful tool to, uh, uh, to have when building this out. Um, Chrome DevTools uh, in, your, uh, in your Electron app, you have access to that, and then the Vue Dev Tools that we kind of saw. Um, so all of these together allow you to um, kind of walk through both your back-end code and front-end code and, uh, and build stuff out. Yes? No, Vue's what I prefer. Like, if I could, if I could, if I could build everything in Vue, I absolutely would. I have coworkers here. Um, views uh, uh, and there, I have a slide here uh, specifically about about building UI. So I'll talk a little bit more in detail about view. But it's a very it's a very uh, easy thing to learn. It's very uh, unopinionated, and you can build either small projects or massive uh, applications with it. And it's so it's it's my preference. So, but but really, sorry. No, Electron is super unopinionated. That little, that little uh, application that is just running, uh, running one HTML file and then like a, a JavaScript tag is is all it really wants. You know, and even the main process, it doesn't scaffold that out for you necessarily. So you can use whatever tools you'd like. Yes. Would you say that the other big part of Electron is that it gives you integration with your OS? So you were showing that you could put things in the menu bar of a Mac, and you could have things in the dock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, actually, uh, part of the Electron documentation goes through um, the differences that you need to account for based on the operating system that you're uh, interacting with. And it's, uh, they have one concise page where it goes through um, the differences and what to think about. Um, but yeah, that's definitely, uh, I'm glad you said that because that's one of, the, one of the biggest parts about Electron is that it allows you to interact with the file system and with the operating system. Um, and it allows you to do it um, pretty easily. So uh, what? Yes. Yep. 
So, uh, oh, yeah. Um, so, really quickly to, to repeat the question, or, or at least repeat the comment, um, Electron is to desktop applications what PhoneGap or Cordova is to um, uh, mobile applications. Let's see. So, um, so Electron uh, gives you gives you an API for interacting with the uh, with the operating system. So, the like this whole file builds the the OS menu that we were seeing before. So this OS menu that just has a quit right there, um, this builds that out, and this is what Electron sa uh, uses to say, create this, you know, you know, you've created this particular menu, now set it on the operating system. So it's not like you have to know, um, you don't have to know the specific language that the operating system is using. You can use JavaScript to um, hand that task off to Electron to do. So, and even the, so the group launcher um, library that's actually launching the groups. Let's see. Uh, you wouldn't think this is much harder to look at uh, whenever you change the color scheme, but it really is. Uh, but this is all it's doing. It's saying it's using the node uh, uh, execute command to say open this particular path. And that's when, before when I was saying that it's an app launcher, but really it's just a whatever launcher. Um, uh, under the hood, all it's really doing is using, uh, using the shell to say, open whatever's at the end of this path. So when we're looking at, um, when we're looking at these paths, these absolute paths to, uh, to applications or to, uh, I don't know if I have any files at the moment. Yeah, these are all apps. But all these, all these absolute paths to the apps, um, all it's doing is going through and building out uh, promises for, uh, for each of those paths and saying, okay, return a promise that executes uh, this open command, uses a, this particular path, and just run it. Um, so it builds a bunch of promises up for each of the paths in the particular group, and then it says, okay, launch everything. When you're done, let's respond to the UI to let the user know that all these apps just launched. So, so, uh, so yes, it gives, it gives you access to the tools. One of the, one of the caveats about that, uh, and especially in this particular case, is this makes it Mac only. Like the, the open command, uh, like I, and I don't know if that, I don't, I don't know if open's a Linux command or not, but it is a, it's a, it's a Mac specific command. So if you're using, if you're working in the Electron uh, node environment and stuff like that, and you're kind of sticking to it, you're gonna get that cross-platform support. Um, if you drop to the shell level, um, or the whatever Windows calls a shell, um, then, then, you're, then you're making your app specific to the operating system, which is fine. Um, this could be refactored to run on the other operating systems by just having a, uh, a way of deciding, do I use this command or this command? What operating system I, am I on? I can ask Electron, um, or I can ask Node to say, what, what, uh, what system am I on? Um, and either use that or that, and you're fine. So, um, but yeah, that is a, is a very, very good question, a very uh, good point. Um, so, <clears throat> so given all that, uh, there's a there's some stuff that you don't have to worry about, which is super nice. Uh, you don't have to worry about cross-platform support. Um, oh wow. Okay. You don't have to worry about cross-platform support because you're building for Chrome. Um, you don't have to really worry about latency between the server and your front end because you're just communicating with a with a process. Um, you uh, the in the main process, since you're running Node, uh, ES6 is mostly supported. Uh, and in the renderer process, I don't know for sure, um, but you have access to Node stuff, so you may be able to use ES6 stuff in the renderer. I just, I just don't actually know if there's any Electron people in the crowd. Yeah. And that's and that's what I'm doing in this particular case, um, and I think theoretically multi-loading files, like not needing that one bundled file, should be less of an issue. Um, though I, I don't know for sure. Um, so building a uh, UI, uh, I talked a little bit about this, and unfortunately, if I'm going to hit everything, I may have to breeze through it just a bit more. Um, but basically, with uh, with Vue. 
um, you have an entry point for your front end code um, where you pull in your dependencies, um, and then you create a uh, component. Uh, there's a root component that houses your app, and it hands off to uh, other components that then you can start play, uh, using to put together your application. Um, so there's a there's a main app components which uh, houses all of your uh, the, is the parents for all of the various components in your application. And then you can start saying, here's where I want uh, custom components. And you can knit things together um, that, uh, in a way that looks very much like the markup that you would normally write. Um, and then you have a section where you can pull in all of your business logic, so any dependencies you need to, uh, to um, handle the business and presentation logic of the application. Um, and then you have a view model that you can use to bind to the, uh, the template that you defined up at the top. And that way, rather than uh, walking the DOM to, uh, to get to various uh, pieces of your application, you could just say, um, I've got a state. In this particular case, uh, this component state worries about a shared state that it shares with other things, and then a drag counter, and uh, and my my template up here can bind to uh, bind to the drag counter or other parts of the or bind to the state, or other parts of the view model can bind to the state. Um, and then all the manipulation happens in JavaScript. You're not having to use jQuery to say, hey, go to this particular DOM element and then walk down here and then walk up here. Um, all of your logic is out in JavaScript. Um, uh, let's see, and as you, um, as you compose com uh, components together, um, and as you break things out, you can define these small bits of markup to render out a specific spot on, uh, of your application. Um, so rather than having a, a whole huge thing of markup, um, you can have this one particular thing, uh, this one particular component that has this defined set of markup, this defined set of business logic, and actually down here, this defined set of styling. Um, uh, packed into one file, and what that one of the advantages of uh, of that is, other than having uh, an isolated state, so that all of your all that component is worried about is whatever you give access to. It's not worried about anything outside of it uh, unless you tell it to worry about it, uh, and that's happening through an import. Um, but it also makes it mobile. I can I can take and actually this notification component was one that I pulled out of another project I, that I wrote and then put into this one and hooked up. So rather than walking through uh, HTML files and walking through JavaScript files and then walking through CSS to figure out which pieces of CSS actually affect this component, I can define this all in one place and then move it uh, in one file. And I could, still, I could still come through and add in global styling, like uh, define global mix-ins or define uh, uh, global variables and mark or uh, CSS that, uh, that applies to the entire application. Um, but all the stuff that, uh, that is important to render uh, the, the app list is housed in this one component. Um, and the reason why I bring that up for Electron is that um, one, the, the uh, it's easier to reason about an application when you're dealing with these small distinct parts. If you've ever built with uh, MVC on the front end, it really sucks. The bigger that the the bigger that the application gets, and the more that your main controller needs to understand about the little bits and pieces of the, of the application, the more that it becomes just unbearable to work with. Um, yes. Uh, yes, yeah. so the question was, uh, is there an example of a component that renders another component? So the, uh, 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 well, I know that there's one in, or I know the app renders them out. So this is the notification component. You pull in your external file, your, you pull in your components code, and then you register that with the, uh, with the view model so that it's aware of it, and then in your template you say, this is where that component goes. If you have a uh, display logic that goes, uh, goes in with it, in the, uh, and in this particular case, I only want to show this notification component if notification message is present, then uh, you can attach it to, to here. Um, and you can, uh, so that allows you to let parent components decide when, uh, to uh, when to do stuff with child components, and it also allows you to um, allows you to pass information from a parent component to a child component um, or pass it through a shared state. Um, I won't go into more detail about that just because I have 
very limited time. Uh, I will be giving, I'll probably be giving an intro to view later on at the full stack group. Um, let's see, the, so let me, let me make sure I'm hitting the important stuff. So let me do, let me do that, let, let me make sure I hit data storage and uh, packaging the app. Um, <clears throat> so the, so the, the reason why I want to hit data storage is because you need a way of storing data in your app. Most, most of your apps are probably going to have some kind of a state that needs to persist uh, between opening and closing of your app. Um, the, uh, for, for this particular application, I'm using a package called Electron Settings. Um, this is what allows you to write your state to uh, the application support folder. Um, and actually, uh, because it's built for Electron, um, on Mac, it will write to the application support folder. On Windows, it writes to wherever Windows stores its application data. And on Linux, it stores it in an appropriate place, too. So rather than you making a bespoke um, method of saving your data per operating system, you can pull in this package. And storing it becomes, uh, bah -bah. let's see, let's see. Storing it and accessing it becomes, Sorry, I blew away all my breakpoints before the demo. Ah, sorry. Um, it becomes a like kind of like an API, uh, uh, an AJAX request where you could say, "Hey settings, get this particular key or store this particular key." Um, it's built by web developers, so it's, uh, the uh, the restful interactions with the storage should be familiar. Um, and to show you what that looks like uh, in the, let's see. Um, when it's stored. So this is what it gets stored as, which is just JSON. So we, we have our, our groups, our array of, uh, our, not array, our object of groups. Um, each group has its own particular key. I store the key within the object uh, for identification purposes on the UI, but then it's just an array of the paths. Um, and it's the name, the label that you want to give to the group. And that's it for this application. There's not anything else fancy. That it's really just a, the typical kind of JSON payload that you would expect from a server request. Um, uh, and then not having to worry about all of, like the headers and stuff like that. Um, so, um, so storing your application uh, can can start to become a little bit, or storing the data from your application can start uh, to become a little bit easier. Uh, and then let's see the. I want to make sure that I go over packaging. So the this uh, one of the reasons why this blew up is because I switched packaging applications uh, um, last night, which is a bad idea. Um, but there is a, so Electron. Uh, the documentation suggests uh, the the documentation explains how you can manually package your app if you want to go through by hand and build uh, build out the uh, the um, uh, the files and folders that you need to. Uh, run this application on the on the different uh, operating systems. You can do that by hand. It also suggests Electron Packager and Electron Builder, um, and those are libraries that allow you to say this. Um, and actually, it doesn't even. It's not even this part that's required. It's Electron Package, and then details about how you want to package it. In this particular case, I want to overwrite the existing package so the packages get written out to this build folder. Um, and this this is what that uh, package creates. So uh, I want to overwrite whatever is there before. Um, because this is Mac only, I want to build it for Darwin, so Mac OS. Um, I want this to be uh, the uh, run on a 64-bit machine. Uh, this is where the icon is loaded. Uh, this is where I want to output it. And that's it. All like that that package takes care of all of the um, all of the minutia of building out. 
Uh, wait, wait. With building out your application. So in the end, you end up with a with a uh, with a, a launchable app with your icon, um, with uh, some default licenses uh, and version information, and that's it. So whenever whenever you're building out your app and you're putting it up on GitHub, and you do a release that hopefully you guys will go back to the last release since this one's probably broken. Um, you can you can create a new release. You can zip up that package and upload it to GitHub, and then everybody can download it and run it. So does that produce just the application file and not an installer? So someone has to know to put that in the application. Um, yeah. thinking about distributing it to other people that maybe aren't aware of that and are used to running an installer. Sure. There is something that allows you to Mac install. users typically are not used to running installers. Mm. We're typically used to the app just running. Yeah, but the other 85% of people. Yeah. yeah but I, I sort of disagree with that. I think that a lot of times you download something and you double click it. It the launches an installer and it has you dragged to an icon that represents oh, mm. the app. That, that's, that's not an installer. That's just, yeah. I get what you're saying. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. We have to basically stop now or just wrapping up. Okay. So uh, there's more to this presentation. I kind of went on at the beginning, uh, but uh, hopefully, luckily for you, um, I'm making these slides available. Um, I've got uh, links to a whole bunch of stuff that I went through whenever I was building this out and like kind of collected information as I was learning stuff. Um, like I said, Electron has fantastic documentation. They also just recently added a user land, um, which, uh, let's see, uh, user land, which has lists of uh, authors and packages and uh, tools that you would typically use. Um, so it's, uh, the documentation is great. It's very easy to jump through and um, start learning, like reading how this works. Um, uh, and these are these are just some of the some of the stuff that I picked out uh, in particular for this particular or for this application. Um, and then, like I said, uh, the slides for this are going to be available. The application's open source, so if you want to dig through the code and fix whatever I broke before I fix it, then you can go for it. It's uh, um, it's up on my GitHub. Uh, I accept pull requests. Uh, and I'll, I'll fix it before the end of the night, theoretically, and have it up there. So that if you pull it down and you want to jump into it, you can. Um, and then just to, just to show that GitHub page, on all of the demos that I do for meetup groups, I try to go into detail on uh, the application, both in showing how it works, um, explaining the bits and pieces of it, and then at the bottom uh, showing you the commands that you need to get up and running. So if you pull down this package and you open up the terminal and you run npm install and you run npm run dev, theoretically the app should launch. Um, and if you run npm run package, the, the application will be packaged. So, so I encourage you to pull this down, uh, dig through it if you're interested. If you have questions, you can ask me like either through the meetup group, you can ask me through GitHub. Um, if you use Slack, there's a STL tech meetup group that you can join um, that, that a number of us sit on all day. So if you wanna ask me a question across Slack, you can, you can feel free, free to do that as well. And Let's see, and then you can stalk me online if you want. And that's it. Oh yeah, so. Yeah.
Yeah, Electron uh, Electron uh, packages or it, it bundles up uh, Node and Chromium to uh, to allow you to create the application, um, which becomes like some of the some of the parts that I'm not covering because I'm still learning is versioning, like whenever versions change and how you update your application. But it's all packaged into the application itself. Good to know. Does that ever break anything? Uh, only when I'm pushing the update. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one other, one other small thing that I'll mention. Um, I think this shouldn't be broken, but now I'm gun shot. Um, I, I started building out uh, another app in Electron, um, knowing that this presentation was coming up, um, and. I did the setup, the 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 full Vue.js and Electron setup, and creating the the window and getting to like the bare minimum of uh, rendering something out to the screen. Uh, so after I got that working, I forked it off and created created a new project. So if you uh, let's see, if you go to uh, this base Electron Vue.js project on my GitHub, uh, which I'll also make sure ends up in the slides, um, that is the basis of. Um, uh, or that that will uh, give you a platform for